Okay, I am literally months later than I wanted to be on this, but I am finally sitting down and filming my review of the Alex Rider TV show, or more specifically, the second season of the Alex Rider TV show, and I think it's pretty good. This is the introduction song. It's not very good, but it's not too long. I said that the first season was pretty good, and I feel pretty much the same about the second season. It's it's more inspired by the books than it is a direct adaptation of them, like there are a fair few amount of changes, uh, but that's not inherently a good or a bad thing, it just is, like it's different than the books were. So the first season skipped over the first book, Stormbreaker, and just went right to the second one, which meant that they kind of had to fold in some of the introduction to the spy world that Alex had to go through in the first book uh, before he could even go on his mission in, to Point Blank, which didn't work 100%. I talked about that in my first review, if you didn't see that. Uh, but then, the second season, they also skipped over the third book. They skipped over Skeleton Key and went straight to Eagle Strike, which I kind of understand why they did it, but I am disappointed because Skeleton Key was one of the better books in the series, in my opinion. However, the reason that they did it, I'm pretty sure, is because they're going for more of a um, overarching narrative with this. You know, they don't want to have every season be pretty episodic the way the books were uh, up until Eagle Strike, and then after that they had a bit more of an overarching story because that's when Alex really gets more involved with Scorpia and so on and so forth. And the first season did hint at that as well. Like, when they were... Uh, folding in all the stuff about um, Alex's uncle Ian being killed and Yasin Grigorovich and just introducing all of that alongside Point Blank stuff, they were also hinting that Scorpio was working with the villain of the second season, and it's also hinted that Scorpio are the ones that killed him at the end of the second season to prevent too much information from getting out. So I get what they're doing and why they're doing it, but I am still a bit disappointed that Skeleton Key was left off. Uh, and, well, much like the first season... I would say that this show has, ra rather than being James Bond for kids like the books were, it's more Jason Bourne for kids. Uh, I forget exactly who said that, but I saw some like comment or review online which said that, and I think that's a very succinct way of putting it. Like, it's a bit darker, it's a bit more violent, it's a bit more realistic, uh, you don't really have the silly gadgets, like, it's a yo-yo, but it's also a gun, like that sort of thing, which James Bond and Alex Ryder are both famous for. So. I can see how that might be disappointing for some people, but for me personally, I was still pretty happy with it. So like I said, this one follows the plot of uh, book four in the series, Eagle Strike, and in that one, uh, Alex finds out that Damien Cray, who is this world-famous pop star and philanthropist, is up to something evil, he's not sure precisely what, and he tries warning MI6 about it, but they don't believe him, and then adventure ensues. Now, I'm just gonna list off a bunch of stuff that I really liked about this season first. Uh, first of all, I loved how we dove much, much deeper into Alex's PTSD here. Like, in the books we do get that, but it doesn't come in until much later in the series, whereas here, it's pretty early on and it's in the forefront, and it, they also go deeper into it. Like, Alex is paranoid and he's constantly anxious, so it kind of makes sense why MI6 wouldn't really trust him uh, when he comes to them telling them about Damien Cray is up to something. Partially because, you know, he just doesn't have that much uh, evidence for it, but also partially because, well, he's paranoid. Why would they trust him? So I did like that. And I also liked how he has friends in the show who play a bigger role in the story uh, than they did in the book, uh, or the books, excuse me, mostly Tom and Katya. Now, Tom was in the books, but he was like a tertiary character at best, who was barely in there. I, I mean, he was in, like, uh, the book after Eagle Strike, which is just called Scorpia. Uh, he was in that a little bit, and he may have been mentioned once or twice uh, beyond that, but he was very much a non-entity in the books, whereas Katya was not in the books at all, I believe. Like, she was in the first season as a uh, Ukrainian general's daughter who was at the Point Blank Academy, but... Uh, in the books, yeah, it was an all-boys academy, so she just wasn't there. Whereas, yeah, in this, uh, they both work with Alex <clears throat> and help him out in his spy stuff. Now, I think that this is a good thing because the books are 100% Alex all the time, pretty much, and just getting to see some different people is nice, and also watching Alex really interact with them makes him feel like uh, more of a well-developed, well-rounded character overall. Because... While he's likable enough in the books, he is 
very simple and very straightforward. So changing that up, I think, is a very good thing overall. Uh, the one downside I will say is that he feels less isolated. And what I mean by that is, in my video, The uh, Rise and Fall of Alex Ryder, which you should check out if you haven't, uh, I mentioned that a lot of kids' books, especially ones that were coming out at that time, uh, were more about teams. You know, the main characters would always have a couple of friends with them uh, that would help them out on their adventures. Like, you know, Harry Potter always had Ron and Hermione alongside him, helping him out uh, with fighting the bad guys, whereas Alex was always on his own and always had to rely on his own wits. So it made all of the uh, spy thriller stuff just seem, well, a little bit more thrilling and a little bit more dangerous. So we do lose out on that, but I would still say it's a net positive. The action here is good. Yeah, it's like, like I said in season one, the action is just pretty good. You know, it's not super crazy over the top like you may be expecting. Uh, and one thing I mentioned before that still holds true here is that when people get hit, like if they get punched or something, it looks like it actually hurts. And, well, that's pretty rare. You know, like, uh, that barely ever happens in uh, movies or shows of this nature. Whereas in real life, yeah, when you get hit, especially if you're hit in the head or something, you you can be really woozy for a few seconds. So I did like that. Just small details like that make the action and the fight scenes a little bit better. And finally, I think that uh, when they expanded Damien Cray's character, that was a really good move on their part. Like, in the book, he's just kind of... How do I even put this without uh, spoilers? Because there will be a spoiler section, but that's later. Uh, basically, you know that he's doing something that he thinks is uh, going to be for the greater good, but he's still a crazy person. And in the show, he's still that, but they go a little bit deeper into it. Like, they show uh, why he hates uh, drugs so much is mainly because his brother uh, died from an overdose. Like, he overdosed when uh, Damien was just a kid, and he's, like, in his 40s now. So even though it's decades later, you can see that it is still extremely traumatic for him to lose a member of his family like that and he doesn't want anyone else to go through with that so even though yes he is still a villain and yes he is still a crazy person he just feels more like a human being okay so now for the dislikes and this is a shorter list but it is still notable um so in this version of the story alex uh, actually meets with sabina near the beginning of this season and in the books uh, the way that Alex found out about Damien Cray being up to something is that he was on vacation, he saw Yasin Gregorovich uh, wandering around, and he realized, hey, wait a minute, that's the guy that killed my uncle, what's he up to? He followed him for a bit, and then found out that he was working with Damien Cray, so that's how he knew he was up to something. Whereas in the show, uh, he runs into Sabina Pleasance. Uh, in the books, it was Sabina Pleasure, I don't know why they changed it to Pleasance in the show. There might be like a double entendre or something that I'm missing there, but... They did change it. Uh, he ran into her, and her father is a journalist who is investigating Damien Cray for something, and then Yasin Gregorovich attempts to murder her father. And I think that's a little bit of a better way to start it off, and a little bit of a better way for Alex and Sabina to meet up and become friends. However, their romantic relationship is pretty forced. Like, I, I didn't like it that much, because she's not in all that much of the season, and I do buy her and Alex's friends, I'll give it that. But, yeah, it's just... Eh, it, it's just a little forced. You know, I don't have a lot else to add. I also dislike how Damien Cray's video game that he was working on was just, like, way too over-the-top and futuristic. Like, it's this big hologram projector where you can shoot arrows and stuff. It's like that scene in the second Hunger Games movie where Katniss is training before the other Hunger Games and she's shooting arrows at the hologram things. It's like that, almost. And... I, I don't know, it's kind of like what they did with the Stormbreaker movie, where in the book it was just a computer. It was a really nice computer that uh, Harrod Sale was giving out to all the schools in England, but it was just a, a computer. Whereas in the movie, they made it into like this room-sized monstrosity where you could uh, like jack into your brain and go into virtual reality and stuff, and it was just really weird and over the top. And this, it's kind of the same thing. Like in the book, it was just a video game console. It was a really nice video game console, which with like, you know, highly technologically advanced graphics and stuff, but it was just a video game console. Whereas in the show, it's just crazy over the top. And it, it wound up being kind of stupid, you know? Like if the tone was more uh, James Bond than Jason Bourne, I think it would have been fine. But the fact that 
this is meant to be taken more seriously, it's meant to seem more realistic, it, it just doesn't fit, and it, it's kind of stupid. And finally, the biggest problem with this season, and in fact with the show in general, by far, in my opinion at least, is that Alex and Yasin really feel a lot less connected than they did in the books. And what I mean by that is Yasin Grigorovich is the man who killed Alex's uncle, who, his father figure, the man who raised him. So obviously, yes, Alex does have a lot of hate towards him and kind of wants him dead, but the show doesn't really focus on that that much, and so they just, uh, they, they don't feel like they have that sort of rivalry about with some other stuff mixed in there that the books had. Because for starters, there's only two seasons of build-up, whereas in the books it was four entire books of build-up. And for another, uh, near the end of the first book, Yasin, he doesn't just save Alex's life, he, or he doesn't just spare Alex's life, he also saves it. Because if you haven't read it, or if it's been a while, uh, the main villain, Harrod Sale, after his plans are foiled, he takes Alex hostage and he's going to take him off somewhere to do something. We don't know exactly what, but it was likely to kill him. And then Yasin shows up and his orders were to kill uh, Sale. And he does, saving Alex's life, and he also just has an opportunity to kill Alex. And Alex even says, like, hey, I'm going to kill you one day. And Yasin, rather than just taking the opportunity to save himself some trouble, spares the kid's life. Like, he, he saves him and spares him. And he even gives him some advice. He tells him, like, hey, look, leave the spy game now, because if you don't take this opportunity, you're going to be stuck here forever, and it's not going to end well for you. And obviously he wound up being correct in the end. And in fact, we find out in the prequel novel, Russian Roulette, that Yasin was uh, being, he was ordered to kill Alex, but he just didn't. You know, he disobeyed orders to save him. And even though by the time you read the prequel, you know why he did it, it is, if you didn't know that, then it's still really fascinating. You start wondering, well, why would this guy do that? And then when you get to Eagle Strike, he also saves and spares his life multiple times. And then in the show, I'm not going to give too much away, but the final episode, final confrontation, uh, Alex and Yasin do interact more, and he saves and spares his life some more, and then, like, the very end, there's, you know, a big twist about uh, what's going on there. And it just doesn't hit as hard when it all comes at once, you know? It just, it just doesn't. There's not enough time for it to sink in. Uh, but, you know, that's the biggest problem I have with the show by far. Overall, still pretty good. Uh, I do appreciate that it grew up with me. You know, it's it's not just uh, banking on nostalgia, it's also changing the story a little bit so I don't know exactly what's going on, and it's uh, making it a little bit more adult. So overall, yeah, I did like that. If you were a fan of the Alex Ryder books and you haven't watched the show yet, I, I'd say check it out, you know? It's at least worth uh, checking out a few episodes before you decide if you like it or not, but I personally really enjoy it. And now for uh, Spoiler Corner. Allah! 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 Okay, so this is basically just going to be expanding on the Alex and Yasin stuff. Uh, basically, at the end, uh, in the final confrontation, uh, the Damien Cray tells Yasin, hey, kill Alex and Sabina uh, because they're going to cause trouble. But Yasin says, no, I'm not going to kill them. And then uh, Damien sh shoots him, and there's a fight between him and Alex. And in the book, Alex just defeats him, and then they manage to stop him from launching the missiles, and they save the day. But in the show, uh, Cray is actually about to kill Alex, and then Yasin shoots him, and so saving Alex's life again. And in both versions of this, uh, it's still slightly different. Like in the book, Alex just talks to Yasin for a minute, and then he tells him, Hey, your father was an assassin, I was friends with him. Uh, go find Scorpia in Venice, and then you'll find your destiny. Whereas in the show, uh, he still has the gun up, and he's, you know, been shot, he's bleeding out, and then Alex says, go ahead and kill me now. We both know you want to. He's like, why would I want to do that? I, your father was my friend. And then he just drops the gun and tells him a little bit more about it and says, go find Scorpia. And, you know, it is still a pretty uh, big moment. Like, you realize, oh, okay, this guy saved Alex's life again, so maybe he's not totally evil, or even if he is totally evil still, he has some sort of connection with Alex that is preventing him from do that, from doing anything to him. And now at this moment you realize, oh, okay, it was because he knew his father. And 
it still works pretty well, but like I said before, it just doesn't have as much time to sink in as it should have, you know, because when it's spread out across multiple books like that, it has months or years to sink in. Uh, but in this, he really doesn't do anything to indicate that he uh, cares about Alex in any way until, like, the final episode, really. So it, it just doesn't work quite as well. Uh, but I will say that, at the very least, this was foreshadowed. In the books, they basically never talk about Alex's parents at all. But then when Yasin is dying, he tells them about his father. He's like, hey, I knew your dad. And so it just, it doesn't completely come out of nowhere, but it is still like, uh, oh, okay, I guess that's a, that's a twist then. Whereas in the show, uh, in the first season, they did have stuff that was implying that Alex's father was somehow involved uh, in all of this. And it is made clear that Yasin, uh has some sort of connection to his family besides just being the guy who killed his uncle. Because there is a moment in the first season where he passes by Alex and he says, hey, you look familiar. Do I know you from somewhere? It's also a little weird how in the show he just says, find Scorpia, and he doesn't say anything about Venice. So I don't know, e even though the final scene is Alex saying, all right, let's go find Scorpia. I don't know how they're going to know where to search if that's the case. But at the same time, I think what they're doing is they're just trying to make it so that the next, the first couple of uh, episodes of season three are going to be about them investigating. And if they already knew to look in Venice, it would just be too easy for them. So they're going to have to work a little harder, follow some more clues in this case, and like possibly hop all the way across Europe or something. But, you know, I just, I, I see why they're doing it. Uh, overall, yeah, like I said, the Alex Ryder show, the structure doesn't always work super great when we're translating the books on the screen, but... You know, this is this is a different story, so it's not the end of the world. And honestly, I would say the show needs a bit more advertising, because it's pretty good. And uh, yeah, if you've read the books, check it out. Uh, thanks to everyone who has gone this far, including my $10 and up patrons. Uh, Apo Sabalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santodis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Dan Anselievich, Dark King, Echo... Flax, Great Grebo, Karkat Kitsune, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Madison Lewis Bennett, Marilyn Roxy, Matthew Baudreau, Michael Weingartner, Micaphone, Peep the Toad, Return of Cardamom, Sad Mardigan, Sillier the Vixen, Tom Beanie, and Vevictus, as well as all the other names you see on here. If you want to help support the channel and get your name on here and also get access to like early videos and voting on future topics, then consider joining my Patreon page. If you don't feel like doing that, you could also become a channel member. Or if you're unable or unwilling to do that, you know, just like subscribe and like the video and share it around and stuff so I can like eat. Um, au revoir. Wait, is that, is that how you say the, the whatever? Goodbye.